Hello, hello, this is Bunny Hoppy doing a pick up and play of Brogue. Well, sort of play. This is going to be post commentary on a run I did earlier today, and spoiler alert if you haven't read the title of this video, um, I've actually finished this run. It's so exciting. It's my first time finishing Brogue. My first time, quote unquote, winning Brogue. This isn't the first ASCII roguelike I've ever beaten too, so it feels it feels great. And I gotta admit, it's I'm I'm, I'm still I still feel sort of bad because I quote unquote cheated. I used easy mode, but even then, even then, um, this run is completely blind beyond the eighth floor, and uh, I feel like the game is hard enough as it is. It's not like the difference between easy mode and normal mode isn't that significant, I feel, especially the later floors. So, instead of just instead of just recapping myself, telling myself what I'm gonna do, let me let's just get straight into this run. First, I'm gonna increase the speed by a little bit, bump it up a little bit, just a tad bit, and. This run starts off pretty standard, and I'm gonna fast forward it for now. I'm gonna fast forward until I make it to the second floor. That's where I started setting up the equipment, the equipment and stuff I needed for this run. Okay, we're about to leave the floor, and this is what we currently currently have. We got a couple of brown a brown potion, indigo, two scrolls of two scrolls, and a couple of other scrolls, and an amethyst ring. I kind of forgot what what I forgot. I kind of forgot what these were, so I'm gonna talk about them as I go about identifying them. Alright, second floor. If you notice, um, the way that, uh, the way I'm currently playing, I'm not really playing it, I'm on Auto Explorer, and right after at this point, I stopped using the Auto Explorer, so... From here on out, it's just all me playing it. Alright, um, that monkey tried to run away with my green potion and just ran straight into the gas. It was- that monkey just chose between me- between me or the gas and he paid for it. He had a better chance getting away if he ran towards me. Okay, a couple more potions. Let's fast forward this a little bit. Okay, we should be heading for the vault, and this is where my optimal strategy started. I noticed that this that this sword I found here, this sword actually has a runic on it. And right after right after that, I started testing out my potions. The first potion I drank was actually hallucination, but surprisingly, right after right the potion I tested right after that was a potion of life, and it immediately got rid of the hallucination, so pretty cool. I'm not sure about the mechanics behind healing potions, but I think they increase your maximum health by 33%. Yeah, it does. It says that in the in the upper screen over there. This run, um, this recording is going to be a little bit different. There might be... It might be a different method I use from other recordings I've did in the past. Like, let me try it right over here, for example. In case I want to get a close-up of the action, I set up particular scenes, like this, for example. And this will allow me to see stuff up close. 
I have it all set up on particular parts of the screen, and I have to admit it's a little bit it's a little bit cumbersome, but if it makes a better video, then I don't know. Anyways, let's fast forward a little bit until the next step. I'm still here identifying scrolls and potions, and we're on depth three now. I forgot exactly what I did here, so I'm going to pay close attention to what I do and try to comment on the things I'm doing instead of quickly skipping them over. Right? As soon as I found that potion of strength, I immediately used it. I figured since I'm not in the lighter floors where, I'm, where I got a risk of being um, weakened by centipedes, I figured it's better to use up all the potion of strengths I find on the earlier floors. Nothing, nothing too threatening yet, just me fighting, just me fighting the lower tier enemies. I have to admit, kobolds are not very, not a, not a very interesting enemy type. Rats on the other hand, I feel, are a little bit more interesting because they tend to run into little secret rooms. And their behavior is very dungeon-like, they're always wandering the corridors and stuff. They're, especially when you use a potion of um, telepathy and you can see where they're moving, they're, the movement seems very... very animal-like. Like they're trying to avoid... avoid any encounters with enemies and even you. Which is... which is cool. Alright. We are now inside of a wig withered fungus area surrounded by a bog. Nothing much is happening yet, so let's let's fast forward until something interesting happens. Still sort of going like exploration mode setting up my strats for later floors. I say strats, but I have I have no idea what I was doing at this point. I mean, I had an idea what I was gonna find, at least until Dup 8. Alright, I identified one of my wands as a wand of beckoning. This guy, th th this this staff, I mean, this wand has came, come in really useful for me, and you would see why. It's a special, it's a special wand used to yank enemies in your, in your proximity, and it's really, really, um, useful for pulling certain powerful enemies away from numerous mobs, and... You didn't see it, but I threw a couple. I threw a couple of um, armors into the lava pit because I did a I did a run in the seat earlier, and those two armor pieces are cursed, and that's gonna be a prevalent theme in this whole in this whole run because I find a whole ton of. See, I'm moving a little a little bit forward, and I can't really comment on the things I'm doing, but. I find a lot of cursed arm armors on this run, so... Alright. We're on depth 5. And I just ate some food to reset the whole hunger clock. Hallucination is never a problem for me because as long as you're not hit by it multiple times, it's not a huge deal. There are different tiers to hallucination. The more hallucination you're hit by, um, the more, the longer it lasts. At this point, I was abusing the search function just to find traps because I hate traps in this game, especially confusion traps. Because I have no choice but to sit there and not move. Just to not risk myself falling on the trap over and over again, because that wastes a lot of time. Okay, a couple of goblin con- there's a goblin conjurer 
in the distance over here. These guys are super dangerous because what made this run a little bit unique to me in particular is I didn't have a ton of ranged options. Okay. Uh, in the distance there, there's a couple of... There's a goblin totem and a couple of goblins. Let's try to skip to the part where I actually face those guys. Or maybe I skipped them, I forgot. Yeah, I think I faced them because there's uh I remember I remember there being a scroll of enchanting there and I'm not skipping out enchantment scrolls, especially since I have this I have this bad boy, um a plus five sword of qu quietus. These wep um any weapon with this sort of um runic has a chance to instantly kill any enemy and the biggest drawback to this is the percentage of that happening is extremely low. So you gotta enchant this stuff a whole bunch to get a good full effect on it. Right now it's at 18%. And my goal for this run is to at least have 30% because that will give me at least four chance four to five chances of getting getting an enemy instantly killed in six turns. So I use that to my advantage. Here's a couple of uh, goblins near a goblin totem. Took care of those guys easily. Right, used a potion of enchanting there. If the pa if the pauses kind of bother you, especially since um, I'm experimenting with this whole scene swapping thing, um, forgive me because I'm kind of new to this. I feel like there's probably better ways, better ways of doing the stuff I'm doing. It's interesting though. Okay, right now, right here I'm just searching the area in case there is something in that corner, but I keep forgetting that this region of the screen isn't really... Isn't really a region for you to explore, it's always boxed in, in, this, in this one little area, so... I keep forgetting about that for some reason. Alright, step 6. And abusing the search function, I try to find... I always think corridors have secret entrances, and this one unfortunately did have one. Right now I'm still hitting the search function because I don't wanna... I don't wanna... I don't wanna trigger any traps. Even though I do trigger a whole bunch of those. But to at least minimi minimize my chance of getting into a confusion trap. Those are the worst. Absolute worst. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit. I'm trying not to fast forward too much because I still want this run to be very... I mean this recording to be very raw or natural. Okay, right now I'm still exploring rooms, trying to see if I could find any resources. Especially food, because I don't want to miss my chance of picking up food. Okay, this is a room filled with goblins worshipping... Goblins worshipping a totem. Let's try to get a close-up of that. There we go. I attacked the goblin totem first. So they wouldn't have anything to worship, so pretty good kill, and found a scroll of enchanting. I threw away one of my potions of descent, In I threw it away because I was kind of pissed off of inventory space, so yep, 
enchanted that sword one more time. What did I? What else did I do here? Ooh, right here I used um, one of my scrolls. Let me move out of this view. Yep. Right here I used one of my scrolls to protect my sword from being corroded because this is going to be a valuable weapon to me and I don't want to... I don't want to risk it getting weaker, so I cast. I used. I use a protect weapon. So let's see. Let's get back to the run. Okay, more dead ends. I went back to see if there was anything hidden here, so I kept searching the walls, and I no avail, nothing. And this is one part where I encountered a whole bunch of goblin guys. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look at those. If I could, if I can actually do it. Let's see. Yeah, this is where I started encountering these fellas, and I didn't want to mess with them. Thinking about it, I could have sneaked up behind the the goblin, the goblin mystic. The one that is highlighted right here. I could have snuck up behind her and killed her because she wouldn't have a lot of space to run away to be to begin with, considering that these other guys are on the bridge with her and they're in the front and she's in the back. I wonder if that's an enemy behavior, like do the enemies in front actually lead the pack and the gob and the one that is in support is always in the back? Because that'll be an interesting, a really interesting enemy behavior. If there's one little improvement I could consider for this game, maybe packs could have leaders, and getting rid of the leader could affect the morale for the rest of the the, 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 the allies. That'll be a really cool dynamic for enemy enemy monsters. Now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, let's let's just move on with this run. Okay, I let them wander away because I thought that would have been the safest thing to do. When I should have killed the... Just like I said, I could have killed the Mystic from the back. Okay. I decided to stick on this floor a little bit longer, just to fill out the map and to see what I missed, most importantly. I think I actually came back just to see uh, see what's up with that missing section in the upper left corner. Actually, no. I actually went up up the stairs instead of going down, and I made a mistake, and I went down the stairs. Whoops. Okay, where am I now? Tap seven, and still exploring, looking for food. I'm always looking for food. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit because, ooh, yes, I remember this floor. Um, this floor has an interesting, interesting layout. Um, it has a, a locked door over here, and the rest of this dungeon over here, uh, with the exception of two items, it's extremely empty. So, the design of this area is telling you that there is a locked door over here, and there's a bunch of a bunch of open area to explore, but. You would end up looking through this entire area and not finding a single key. But the way how it's hidden is, there's these pile of bones in the corner. And I'm gonna take a look at that in a second. Let me show you. Let's take a little close up for a second. This should be close enough. Right, right now. Get rid of this guy. And let's try let's let's try moving to the middle screen. Well, you wouldn't be able to see anything, but you see this pile of bones in the corner. We're gonna pay close attention to that. Upon searching these bones in the corner, let's take a closer look up. 
there's a door and we find we find a hidden room with some goblins hidden behind it a goblin warlord these guys are these guys aren't, aren't as bad especially compared to the goblin the goblin wait no I'm thinking about the dark battle mage not the not the goblin type enemies let's see if we can get a better view of this Yep, this is probably a better view, but we wouldn't be able to see where I'm going until I get in there. Actually throw a gas potion in there and sort of bail it. Let's see. Trying. It's kind of confusing to look at my layout. There we go, that's a better view. And then, after throwing a gas potion, I threw... An incineration, just to just to speed up their kill process, and uh, I think that killed them. Also burnt down the door in the process. All right, I checked the area to make sure there are no enemies around, and uh, I pick up this key. Still searching the area in case there's anything super hidden, but I figured it wasn't. And in this room I find, let's see, let's move that, we find a spear, we found a spear. I'm gonna spoil this one, this one turned out to be a spear of slowness. It's not super useful considering the amount of damage um, spears do, and uh, the effect isn't as the effect wasn't as useful, especially since I like switching rep weapons around mid-combat, and I feel that only synergizes well with Paralysis. On one of my runs, I actually had a Dagger of Paralysis, and as soon as I hit it, um, there, there was a chance it became paralyzed, and once th the immediate moment the enemy becomes paralyzed, I switch to an even stronger weapon, and considering um, paralyzed enemies tend to not have any... I mean, considering hits hits on paralyzed enemies ignore evasion factors, um, even if you were wielding a super strong weapon that has a low chance of hitting, you would hit it 100% of the time, so... It's a good... Paralyzed plus strong weapon is a really good strategy. Only works for one-on-one, -on -one, though. Alright. I'm not gonna go close up to these this moment because I don't feel like anything else interesting has happened here, aside from picking up a couple of cursed armors and some more food, of course. Okay, let's skip a little let's skip ahead a little bit. All my talking has made me fall a little bit behind, but like I said, this whole area towards the right here is completely void and empty. It doesn't have anything. It's supposed to be a red herring to make you go looking for a key, even though it's not out here. So, I, I like the I like the layout design over here. Okay, what do we have here? We got a whole crew of goblins here, and they're probably protected. I mean, probably worshiping a probably worshiping a totem. Let's take a look. Yep, they're worshipping a totem, and along with these guys, there's an ogre. I didn't expect to see this goblin mystic over here, so... My strategy was to stick back, because I figured um, goblins don't really move very far away from their totem to begin with, so... I killed the one thing that tried to move close. And I try to clear out as much as these guys over here as possible before this goblin this, this goblin mystic got off a lot of swords on me, and I managed to get up close. And yep, got rid of that guy. And getting rid of the totems just for completionist purposes. Now that I think about it, um. Doing my run on the way up, you'll never see it on this run because um, my my playback my playback got corrupted before I reached this point on the way out. I saw a bunch of goblins hanging. I saw a bunch of goblins hanging out in this area, 
and I figured I figured they came they, they came here hunting down whoever destroyed their totem. If so, that that'll be some interesting enemy behavior, and I'm thinking about it. I highly doubt I highly doubt it's uh, uh, it is it is as deep as I'm thinking, but whatever. Anyways, let's keep looking around. Oh, yeah, like I told you, I played up to depth depth eight completely. I mean, played up to depth eight, and everything else is gonna be completely blind from this point. I identified that ring as being a cursed ring, and so there's actually a reason I ignored it. Okay, let's skip ahead to the parts where stuff started, where st stuff starts getting a little bit more interesting. Not even goblin mystic, myst I mean goblin mystics and warlords are as interesting anymore. Even though goblin mystics can kill you, no matter how strong you are. Uh, this part, I there was a there was a some gas that released in this room down here. Let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, down here, there there was some gas released in this room, and. If I, since I learned something from my previous run, I learned that if there isn't a lot of um, airflow for gas to get out, gas will deplete much slower or just stay there forever. And you'll see me do something in a second that tries to counteract that. Okay, I was in a dead end again, waiting for this gas to dissipate. And the gas still hasn't been gone, and still waiting, and the gas is gone. And s since I thought the gas c cleared out here pretty quickly, I figured the gas wouldn't be inside of here, and surprise! Open the door, and there's still gas all over. So, this is what I did. First, I try to look for an alternative path out, and from here, let's take a close-up of that again. From here, I opened the door, dropped an item to hold the door open, and I figured that would have let the gas out of the room. I don't know if that actually worked or not, but hey, the gas came out and I'm not I'm not complaining. Okay. Skipping ahead because I don't really care how long this video is going to be because I won Brogue and I feel very very proud for actually winning it. Okay, a couple of potions. I'm running out of things to talk about as you can tell, so let's see. What am I doing here? Um, I identified one of these doors as being a vault. Actually this floor had a couple of vaults. Ooh, got super lucky there. That would have been that would have been bad if I let that goblin mystic wander about. Goblin mystics are very irritating because especially in this run I didn't have a ton of ranged options. I had to rely on something we'll find probably on this floor. I can't remember exactly. Alright, in the distance over there I saw a couple of uh, goblins goblins around a totem again, as you can see right here. And uh, I told myself I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count I'm not gonna rush straight into them because one there's a spider over there and if I were to get webbed if I were to get webbed and there was a goblin mystic in that area that would have been bad for me so I figured I went down this way accidentally triggered a gas trap and I looked at this location and I figured this could be a good tactical location to lure enemies in and paralyze them and then go in for the kill but I figured that would be too much setting up and I decided to look for a way to get around them. 
so using this little corner I found, I kind of snuck along the wall making sure I'm not detected by those guys and I should have been pressing the search key over here because this is what happened. I hit the search key, I did find a trap and actually I did, I did use the search function but I, I intentionally triggered this trap over here to at least lure some of these guys from up here down here. Because this little corridor, I feel like, is a more safer space to fight than um, up here. So, let's get straight into that fight. Okay, let's see. Yep, this should be a good, a good setup for it. Alright, here I encounter the Goblin Mystic and the Goblin Conjurer. Well, I've been saying the name of, of the enemies wrong, now that I'm thinking about it. The Goblin Conjurer are the Spellcasters, the Goblin Mystics, they are the Supports. Right now, I was getting attacked by Spectral Blades. I wanted to see how long I could do this, because I didn't want to use up a scroll of teleportation here, so... I tanked the damage. And uh, I saw that the Goblin Conjurers were in the distance, and I used my Staff of Blinking. I figured that I'd finally use it over here to get at least get close up to one of them to go for the kill. So I killed one of them, and my next goal was to at least kill this one. And I managed to scratch him, but I didn't get, I didn't get him, so... Since he was running away, I used the zap, I mean, I used the blinking staff again to get closer, but he ran at least a space away from me again and was getting a little bit tight here, so I used my third and final blink and it didn't work, so I just threw a dart at him and I killed him. From here, I just chased around this, actually no, I just, I just... I just didn't care for the Goblin Mystic anymore, and I just threw a potion of descent and sent it on its way. That was one of my super intense battles. Okay, now we're gonna take care of the totem. Alright, that takes care of the biggest threat on this floor. Or, what I thought was the biggest threat. I know the low health sound may be a little annoying, but I feel like this was the thing that made me feel tense, super tense, along with my own heartbeat, especially later on in this run. So right here I'm just resting until I was fully healed, but before that I used my... I think I used, let's see, what did I use? Yeah, I used my telepathy, no, I didn't use my telepathy charm, but I used one of my potions of telepathy while I was resting. In case um, I get ambushed by any enemies, I could always go out there and try to get rid of them. So I figured my health was good enough as it is here because my nutrition was already pretty damn low, so I proceeded. I figured the regeneration from the easy mode would have been sufficient enough. Let's see if I found any... Yeah, I'm not using the ring, the other ring I found later on. I was just checking. Right, right here I got entangled by a spider. S spiders aren't a big threat, even though sp spiders were the thing that made this whole replay go out of sync to begin with. I'm kind of bummed over that, I couldn't get the whole replay. Whoops, I moved, I moved a little bit too far. Let's see, what did I do? Yeah, right after I was hallucinating, I ran up in a corner and I fell through a hole instead of hitting the search key button like I usually would have did. I think at this point I used before that I used a, a apple to... No, not an apple. Either a mango or a ration to recover my nutrition value. Okay, let's get back to the run. 
another trend in this run, I fall in holes a whole lot. I'm still telepathic at this point and I'm kind of knowing what I'm expecting. I wanted to find a way to get um, to those goblins because I feel like they might have they might have been problematic to me even though looking at it right now they're in this corner with no items in that room. I could have ignored these guys and I could have ignored these guys and not do anything at all because these guys were no threat to my run at all. So here's what I did. I'm trying to figure out if I actually went back. Oh, this place. I remember this. Hmm. Huh, this view is super skewed. I can't really see what I'm doing here. It looks fine on the recording, but not in the window for some reason, but whatever. Here I actually solved that puzzle because this totem here actually makes you teleport. If you step on any of these glyphs, it'll teleport you straight here, so you gotta negate its properties. Negating is one of the most important mechanics I feel in this game because it's just super important. I'm still looking at my windowed views over here because the ones on the right they don't look they don't look as right as I want them to look. Maybe I should let's see. Let me do a quick little edit of the scene. Nah, that doesn't fix it. Nope, doesn't fix it at all. Well, I guess I'll I guess I'll have to surface with that because it's not it's not a huge deal. It's all the way in the corner. So Oh, right here I'm just solving more puzzles. I used the staff of blinking to get over here to get the key. And since I have two keys on this floor, I went straight for the vaults. And figured some goblins would be back, so I threw a potion of cosmic gas and I f stayed in this corner in case any of them were running over here, so instantly kill that guy. Another goblin mystic, threw some couple of darts at this guy, and uh, one final, one final goblin conjurer. I pulled him towards me and slayed him. Okay, what's in what was inside of this vault? There what which one I can't oh yeah, I re the, the the choice is obvious here. I took the ring of regeneration because I didn't even need to think twice about it, I just took it, because Ring of Regenerations, they're good. And here we go, we're inside of a room just full of potions, so I, at this point I was just testing out potions, throwing away stuff, making room for stuff, and uh, trying to be careful at this point. I think at this point I actually, whoops, forgot to take off the take off that screen. Anyway, at this point I was actually testing... Oh, I forgot my train of thought. Yeah, at this point I think I forgot to take off my armor. Yeah, at some point I forgot to keep taking off my leather armor when I was faced with um, acid enemies and I ended up corroding my leather armor to a point where it was just useless to wear it. Okay, I actually skipped over that really quickly, but I yanked one of those goblins in the corner over here. Hmm. I wonder why this, why the window looks a little strange. 
Yeah, I actually yanked one of those goblins in the corner over here and... Still trying to find a way to get around them. I don't even know why I... I don't even know why I bothered, um... Bother trying to find a way to get rid of these goblins because, I, like I said, there was nothing in that room. So I threw a paralysis potion, then I tried to run in for the kill, and this happened. I hit a gas trap, and uh, let me just, this is embarrassing. I just went straight in the gas, and I didn't get any advantage for that paralysis, so I had no choice but to just fight them straight on. Alright, no reward out of that, just self-satisfaction. Okay, back to regular view and let's skip ahead a little bit. Just a couple of dar Oh, I skipped again. I keep skipping over parts that are important, but I fell through another hole in the ground. Ended up on depth 11, kind of early. At this point, I didn't care how many times I fell down. I told myself, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna backtrack unless there's a vault on a previous floor. So, if I miss, if I missed food, if I missed anything, it wouldn't be a big deal. I figured, uh, I figured that I would probably find food. Even though there, there would have been a chance I wouldn't have found food because there are runs where I just don't find food at all. Alright, nothing nothing different so far. It's just the same old generic goblin mobs around totems. I'm trying not to skip too much because I keep forgetting the points where I actually fall through the floor because those are legit really unexpected. I ignored that potion of descent because I figured I had enough already. Still in exploration mode. Oh, I lost a valuable ally over there. My goblin mystic. She would have been, or he or she would have been really useful on later floors, but I forgot. Okay. Actually, no. Um, on later floors, I do find an ally that um, that would have synergized really well with a Goblin Mystic, but it didn't happen. This is the first time I blinked across a ch um, this water over here, and I figured it, and I figured um, I, I could actually blink across environments. That's and that was a really cool feature, even though. Even though the game sort of warns you if you're kind of, um, if the chances of survival are a bit low, especially if you were to try, if you, especially if you were to try to blink over lava, for example. Oops, let me take off the scene again. It's off scene again. Whoops. Okay. This is really hard to record, by the way. I'm kind of manually switching the scenes myself, and it's kind of hard to tell when I'm tell like when I'm on a scene and when I should switch off of it. I have a really small attention span. I saw a pile of bones in this corner, and I thought there might have been something over here, but there wasn't anything. Okay, still searching for the amulet of Yendor, still very far away from it. Okay. I forgot what made me want to turn back from that bridge because I didn't, I feel like I probably, there was probably, um, I, it was probably easy to scope the area out like this, like piece by piece from the bottom, piece by piece from the top, so. I was just looking around, in case I missed any food. 
because I've already skipped a couple of floors due to falling into holes and I didn't want to risk missing a yet another healing item. Um, yeah, something I learned about these wisp enemies over here, yeah, these will-o'-wisp guys, they are very dangerous to fight on bridges because their heat combined with your body heat causes the bridge to burn down and you to fall. That has happened to me before. Not enough to kill or run, but it was interesting because it was, of course, the environment interacting with each other, and I, I really love that aspect to this game. Oh man, my throat is getting a little torch. Let's let me drink a little bit of tea. All right, let's get let's get back to this. This might take a while. Even though we're kind of close to the the end the game. Nothing new yet. Let's keep let's keep re let's keep moving forward and let me kind of stop to remind myself what has happened on this floor. Don't think anything special. Just running into raids and I'm trying to find ways to get rid of them because of course I have no ranged options. Alright, this is uh, an in interesting encounter over here. Let's get a little bit close up to that. <laughs> Neither one of these views are pretty good. Neither one of those views are good. This one's good enough. So here, I saw this goblin totem. This goblin totem, and I figured, um... I figured a, a good idea would be to blink inside of there and negate it. So that's what I did. I blinked in there, tried to get as close to that totem as possible, and I used my charm of negation on it. That way I could get rid of its magical properties. And from there I just killed the I just killed the ogres. Killed everything in sight. Uh, a troll walked in. Mm, kinda terrible. Okay, time to switch off this scene. Still looking around for secret doors, even though there's not enough room for even a room in this little area. But you never know, there might be tiny rooms with secret stuff. Hmm. Alright, here I encounter a couple of Dar Blade Masters, nothing serious. And one of the marble statues broke and became a naga. I don't think I have a good a good capture of that area. Do I? Nah, I don't. I unfortunately don't have a good capture of that area. And I'm not gonna bother. Here, I encounter a couple of new fellas. The Salamander. These guys are extremely dangerous. They're immune to fire. Let's take a look at their stat screen. Yeah, Surfing Refs in, I mean, refs in Flames. And carrying a burning lash, salamanders dwell in lakes, lava, blah blah blah, all that stuff. My approach with salamanders is just straight up attacking them. Um, you could negate their weaknesses by using negation scrolls, or anything that does negation. Negation is really good in this game. But I just straight up went up to it and attacked it. Right here I got a Naga as a pet, but it didn't last very long. Here I'm just waiting out the confusion because I didn't want to 
be between a Naga that was confused and, of course, me being confused, so... I didn't care enough for the Naga to actually wait for her to actually recover, so... I kept going, but she follow she managed to follow me. Pretty good. Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. Oh, I skipped over that part where I yanked a zombie from all the way in this corner over here and pulled him to where I was. I really love the staff of, I mean, the... Was it a charm of beckoning? No, wand of beckoning. Yeah, I mean, that was my final charge from it. I still haven't found a decent way to go about attacking zombies, because zombies... You feel like throwing... You feel like throwing, um... Setting them on fire would be a good... A good way of attacking them, but it turns out... While it's kind of their weakness, it's the worst way to go about it, unless they're surrounded by enemies that'll be killed with them, so... Made a mistake of ascending instead of descending there. Fix that. Okay, new floor in a carpet, carpeted area. Nothing new as yet. Hmm. I'm trying to remember this floor layout. It's not, it's not clicking. I knew there was like a lot of wisp here and a lot of wraiths. Wraiths are pretty annoying, by the way. They. If you attack them at critical HP, they'll just straight up run away from you. I negated another one of those totems because negation is good. There's no reason why you shouldn't be negating stuff. At least whenever you can. I saw a uh, sleeping dar blade master here and I saw him right next to this trap trigger. Let's take a closer a closer look at that. Yeah, this this star blade master was right next to this trap, and using a little bit of intuition, instead of attacking that star blade master, I could have got a sneak attack on him. By the way, I just did something completely unnecessary. I threw a dart on the trap and just closed the door and ran. But the star had pretty smart AI. He blinked out of there. He blinked out of that poison cloud and. I just slayed him because he he left that poisoned room without without a lot of health, so Alright, let's keep going on. This looks like a really Yeah, I actually encountered a spider there, I kept getting poisoned. As you can see, um, my poison is multiplied by 4, and I had a really high chance of dying. So I used a teleportation scroll instead of bothering fighting that, fighting those guys. And I rested up here, just in case I needed at least a, a speck of health. I think that's the same spider, but I was at a good vantage point to kill him, so... Dying again. Right here, I use the fire immunity to get through this lava. Picked up a scroll that I had no idea... Had no idea what its function was. Okay, let's get to the part where I leave this floor completely. Explosive gas around a pit of magma. That doesn't seem like a decent combination. You'd think it automatically explodes, but... Maybe the properties of magma are a lot different than just regular fire. Right here I stepped on a confusion trap. This is a little interesting encounter over here. Let's try to get close up. Right here I was trying to wait up my, po my confusion and I got held by a bog monster. My sword of uh, Quietus managed to do quick work of it, and I encountered 
two, three, not two, but three more of these guys. Quietus really did work of them. When the Quietus activates, you see that little purple aura that means you immediately kill an enemy. That's a really... I really love this weapon. Okay, let's take off the scene and get over this. I didn't encounter any more bog monsters, by the way. I might have encountered one more, but I forgot. Yep, I did. Right here, I was being... ...tormented by this pixie. Pixies don't become a problem till... I mean, a super problem till later on. Wait, I noticed something different about this floor. Is that explosive gas spreading over the floor? Yeah, the explosive gas is spreading all over this area. The magma is actually making the gas spread. That is interesting. I didn't stick long enough to actually see the effects of that. But if I knew that was the case, I would have stuck. I would have stuck there. Here, I was in a seriously bad situation. There was a ton of gas. I was trapped in this little corner, and everything was dying, so I used my blinking staff to at least move from here to here as quick as possible, and I told myself, let me tank out the rest of this damage, it's better than dying. So I sticked around this door, I could have ran straight into that door, because I but I figured the gas wasn't enough to catch up with me, so... I stuck near the door in case I opened it as soon and see a bunch of enemies, that would have been a pain in the butt. Okay. Nothing super new, just more just more enemies, more layouts. And this shit happened. I actually thought I was safe over here because I didn't get the prompt that I was being followed by a goblin conjurer at all, and I figured I was like completely safe. But I wasn't. So I try to get close to this guy as possible. I ended up using a potion of life here because I would have been surely dead at this point, so... I tried blinking towards this goblin... This goblin conjurer, and it wasn't working. And I made one move forward, and luckily the goblin ran straight into my path, and I managed to kill him. Oh, I think at this point I forgot to take off my armor. Wait. My armor isn't weakened yet. I guess I got lucky with that acid torrent over there. The one that I ju just got rid of, by the way. Actually, no, I did take off my plate armor for that acid. For that acid, um, spitter. Acid spitter. What am I saying? They're called acid torrents. From here, um, from here on out, I farmed, uh, actually no, yep, no, that's not a good view. Is this a good view? Yeah, this is a good view. From here, I actually farmed this door, and you would see me making use of that in a second. Because here... Here I encounter a couple of a couple of nasties. You'll see them. Yep, I encountered a couple of centaurs. And I was actually sitting here thinking about what I was gonna do because if I rushed straight towards them, they would have led me to even more enemies. So I figured the safest way was to try finding a door. A door so I could actually uh, exploit their artificial intelligence and the door was all the way over here so it was either chase them and hope there was a door over here or lead them back here 
and I went with a safer choice and just let them back. Like, I'm expressing over here. Still moving back towards that door. Now, I am at that door. But it doesn't it doesn't end here. I actually went out to check to see. I actually went back out and I was of course chased by more of these guys. I run back in this room, try to hide by the door. Figured the this guy wasn't coming out because I figured she was near um, a goblin co blade master. I mean, uh, a dark blade master. Um, when dark priestesses are surrounded by other allies, they don't bother chasing you through doors at all, so... It's best to try to get rid of the other units before making any subtle moves. Okay, let's skip ahead. Just nothing but ogres at this point. Nothing interesting. Damn it, boy. Go to depth 16. There's nothing there's nothing left here to do. <sighs> okay, we're approaching the the hour of the rogue run. And as soon as I make one step, I fall through a hole. I didn't last on that floor very long. I think I'm going to continue this recording in another in another video. Plus I need to take a break from talking anyway. So, um, if you've been enjoying my little recap of this run and you're curious to see, curious to see the end of this, because I've obviously have 5,000, 5,000 more turns before the end. So, until then, I hope you've been enjoying this. Please watch the other video because it's going to be really, really, really good. There's one part that really made my heart just pop out of my body and I was scared out of my mind. Look forward to that. Please, please do.